This is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics Guide, preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, we have a gentleman by the name of Jacob on the Aquaponic Guide Show. He's presenting his blueprint, and he wants the Aquaponic Guide to kind of go over it and give some feedback. So stay tuned. Check out the blueprint. Hopefully, some of you guys can learn and, pre and prevent yourself from making any of these costly mistakes that will cost you down the line. Woo! Hey, Brooklyn. How you doing? Uh, this is Jacob down in Texas. What's going on, Jacob? We got Texas in the house. Texas in the house. What's up, man? Here's a little rough draft of a backyard project. I'm uh, looking at you starting here pretty soon. Uh, if you have any advice when I'm after going over this, it would be very helpful. We don't have to make any mistakes. I'm going to start off with a sump tank. It's going to be an in-ground. Uh, it's going to be a 250-gallon IBC tote where I'll be having my pump that pushes the water out to a couple of fish tanks, one on each side. And uh, these also will be uh, an IBC tote, 250 gallons each. I'm going to stop right here and tell you, first of all, I do not recommend IBC totes for fish tanks unless, with the exception, of using them for low fish stocking densities with uh, systems such as media beds. So I want to get that clear right now. If you're looking into getting into further series production, you're going to want to start off with a different type of tank, a round tank or an aquarium tank, uh, preferably, versus starting off with an IBC tote, because it's not going to give you the proper training um, to have higher fish stocking densities. So let's start off with that right there, Mr. Jacob. Uh, here, it'll go down to a solids filter to collect all the gunk. That I'll be using a 55 gallon uh, barrel, the big blue barrels, um, to collect all the solids from here. Er, hold on. So you're using media beds for this particular setup. And if we rewind back, you said you have um, a barrel set up for the solids filtration. Now, that's not what you want to do for media beds. The purpose of media beds is to allow the, the um, solids to accumulate in the media bed and mineralize and break down. That's the purpose of it. So if you add a filtration unit before that, then you're kind of uh, defeating the purpose of having a, a, a media bed. You, you, you're you better off using something else. There's no purpose of, of using it. So with that being said, you would take out that solids filter and then just have all the solids accumulate in the media bed, mineralize there, break down, and then further process to be um, used for the plants. Now, with that being said, we rewind back to the tanks. This is what I was saying about the tanks. You can use an IBC tote in this setup because a media bed, when it's properly sized, and I'll leave a link for um, you to find out how to properly size it um, because uh, Dr. Winner, uh, Wilson Leonard, he already did the calculations for this and broke it down. I'll leave a link for you to properly size it. When you have a media bed that's properly sized, then the fish stocking density is much, much, much less than a, a traditional aqua, uh, aquaponic setup. So you can kind of get away with these IBC totes in that circumstance. Moving on. I plan to overflow into some media beds. These also are 50, uh, 55 gallon barrels that I will be cutting in half. So I should have about 10 on each side, 10 to 12 on each side. And these I will be using a flood and drain with some bell siphons. So you have multiple um, setups right now with the media bed, which is multiple flood and drain units. If you could, it would be better just to have one long bed instead of multiple beds. One long bed with one flood and drain or bell siphon there. One, because the more you add on, the more problems are likely to occur. You have however many um, media beds here, 15, 20 of them lined up, 12 of them lined up then that means that you just have 12 um, uh, potential options of failure for your bell siphon. And, and a lot of times that does occur. One of them's not working, you know, um, and it's not adjusted. You have to keep going back adjusting. It's better to deal with one. So if you can eliminate this problem, use one long media bed versus a million of them. And uh, from here, those drain into a DWC uh, raft. Now here we're gonna. I'm gonna tell you to pick one. I do not advise doing hybrid setups. I don't advise doing that, and the reason is is because 
Each one of the uh, systems, the floating raft, media bed, NFT, these require, they have different requirements. The feeding rates are different. The fish stocking is different. So when you're combining them, them together, there's no calculations that are um, uh, available at the time to give you correct sizing for your system. So right now you're just winging it. You're winging it right now and you're not going to have proper production. You're not going to get adequate production out of this system. You're just going to be winging it. The next thing you know, you're going to fall into the trap of hydroponics with the fish cover up because you, because your, your system's going to be out of balance. You don't have any um, set guidelines to go by to, um, to, to, to have your system work properly. You don't know how much feeding, how much feed to put in there. There's no calculations on this. So until we get calculations, someone can do a scientifically proven um, way to set up hybrid systems. That's not something that I would recommend, especially if you're thinking about getting serious with this, you don't want to get fall into that trap because it's going to be pointless. You're going to have to start all the way over again when you realize that it's, it is not going to work that way. So I would pick one. They both grow the same thing. DWC and a media bed. They're both doing the same thing. So there's no reason to have both of them in there. There's no reason. There's no reason to do it. If you're going to do this for a hobby in backyard production, just go with the media bed. It's going to be much easier. But serious production, high volume production, you know, intense fish production and all that, then you're going to do the, the floating raft. That's going to be a much, much better choice by far. And labor uh, requirements and all that by far. So pick one. And in your circumstance, you have to decide what, it, what, what you're using this for. Um, not too sure if I should add another biofilter here because I know the media beds will be used as a biofilter. I'm not too sure if I would need one right here before going into the DWC. You would not need an extra biological filter in this setup. I don't advise this setup, but if you were to do it this way, you would not need an extra biological filter um, because the media beds, they provide the biological filtration for that section. And the floating raft, once you have your plants in there, the plant roots provide sufficient amount of uh, biological surface area for nitrifying bacteria to colonize. So you would not need any extra biological filtration in this setup here here uh four foot by 20 foot about 10 to 12 inches deep and then uh, from here it would go down into a back into my sump tank to get the cycle running all over again plan on growing uh some tilapia on one tank maybe some uh trout or catfish or maybe just tilapia all the way around if you have any pointers uh, that'd be great. Uh, let me know what you think, man. Thanks. I would pick one fish. I would not grow two fish in the same system. One fish is what I would focus on and, and focus on getting good at growing that one fish. Tilapia is always going to be, as far as now, is going to be my number one recommendation if you're in the correct climate for it. And you're in Texas, so it's hot in, in, in that area. Most of, those region, most of that region down there is hot. So a tilapia would be a very, very good choice. Um, catfish, they don't really, you can use catfish, but it doesn't really utilize the, um, the, uh, the water column as well as tilapia and they don't grow as fast. So catfish usually like to dwell at the bottom. Cat, uh, tilapia will use, you know, the bottom, the middle and top layer of the water column. So they're just more effective, just more efficient of a fish than, than any of the other ones. Trout, you know, if you're not in a cold area, then they're not going to be, you know, you're almost wasting your time growing that, growing those. They're much more sensitive than tilapia um, and catfish. Catfish and tilapia are both very hardy, but, you know, tilapia is just, it's just in a class of its own. So if you can get, if you want to raise one, that's going to make, give you the least amount of time, uh, least amount of problems and the most production out of it, then tilapia is just going to be the way to go. Check your regulations in your area. Make sure that tilapia are allowed. Um, because uh, sometimes in different areas, different um, uh, districts, the tilapia may be restricted. So check that first, make sure they're um, allowed. And then, you know, I would choose tilapia um, if you're a tilapia fan. So thank you, Jacob from Tejas. Thank you very much for submitting your blueprint. So uh, real quick, like I said, I just want to make sure that you understand that um, I would definitely change a few things on this setup. I would not put this setup together here um, because it's just... You're just not going to get maximum production out of it. I can see right now you have 250 gallon tanks. Those are probably going to be too big for this setup that you have here. Like they're probably going to be too big of tanks. You have 500 gallons total. 
This is not really uh, that large of an area. Maybe if these were deep water uh, floating raft units, then maybe that would be um, that would probably be uh, correct. But with the um, media beds, they're probably going to be a little bit too big um, for that. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Check the uh, calculations. Go there, run the calculations and find out the exact media bed and the exact water volume that you need to have your system set up uh, properly. I'm going to leave a, a link there. And so you can go ahead and check that out. Make sure everyone's using the proper um, calculations before building this stuff, because that's the fundamentals. That's the foundation of getting your aquaponic system correctly, building it um, uh, properly, sizing it properly so you can have your production um, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, being adequate once you begin feeding and uh, once you begin harvesting and things of that nature. You want to have everything in balance. That's the point of aquaponics. You want things to be balanced out correctly. This system here is going to be much more difficult to balance it out um, because of the different systems that you have in this one setup. So pick one. Pick one. Go with that. If you want to run another one, use a different setup and just run it with that setup. You know, just separate systems is what I'm going to recommend. Separate systems and to master those systems and then uh, make sure you get the best production that you can get. So with that, thank you once again, Jacob. This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics. Anyone else you have questions, uh, you want something reviewed, Brooklyn at the school of Aquaponics dot com. Send a video and I will be more than happy to help you out. Woo!